Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Manetta, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about Raynaud's Syndrome. Patients with upper extremity ischemia of diverse etiologies can present with Raynaud's Syndrome. Patients with Raynaud's Syndrome have intermittent episodes of digital ischemia induced by cold or emotional distress. The classic Raynaud's attack consists of blanching of the fingers, followed by bluish discoloration and subsequent hyperemia. This is thought to reflect vasospasm of the digital arteries, deoxygenation of the trapped blood, and subsequent hyperemia with relaxing of the vasospasm. Primary Raynaud's is common in young women. Afflicted patients have anatomically normal digital arteries manifested by normal digital PPG waveforms or a so-called peak pulse digital artery PPG waveform. Patients with primary Raynaud's have no serologic abnormalities. The prognosis is good with the risk of digital ulceration or amputation very small. Patients with secondary Raynaud's syndrome have Raynaud symptoms associated with digital artery obstruction. They generally have obstructive PPG waveforms in at least one finger. False negative studies can occur in that only one patent digital artery is required to have a normal PPG digital waveform. Patients with secondary Raynaud's disease are at significant risk for digital ulceration and digital amputation. The risk is associated primarily with the extent of digital artery obstruction and not serologic abnormalities. The vascular surgeon is most often asked to evaluate Raynaud's syndrome in the context of finger gangrene. Finger gangrene is not caused by Raynaud's. Raynaud's is a symptom, not a diagnosis. Finger gangrene is caused by arterial obstruction. When faced with a patient with finger gangrene, the cause of the digital artery obstruction must be determined. The vascular laboratory, serologic testing, and angiography all have appropriate roles in determining the underlying etiology. The etiology of digital artery obstruction generally falls into one of two categories. The first is intrinsic small artery occlusion, and the second is embolic small artery occlusion. Crucial questions are, is this resulting from an embolic manifestation of a large artery disorder, such as atherosclerotic occlusive disease, or a subclavian aneurysm? Is this intrinsic small artery occlusive disease resulting from Berger's disease or a connective tissue disorder? Or is this small artery vasospastic disease with an overall benign prognosis? Patients with bilateral obstructive Raynaud's have bilateral abnormal PPG digital artery waveforms. These patients have a systemic disorder, most likely a connective tissue disease. Patients with vasospastic Raynaud's will have normal or peak pulses on their digital PPG studies and normal digital pressures. They will likely have a positive response to provocative cold challenge testing. Biofeedback is minimally effective. Direct vasodilators or calcium channel blockers, while occasionally effective, often have poorly tolerated side effects. The patient with primary Raynaud's in most cases is best treated by avoidance of the conditions that provoke the Raynaud's attack. Embolism from a surgically correctable source should always be suspected when a patient presents with Raynaud's syndrome involving a single upper extremity with vascular laboratory testing suggesting unilateral digital artery obstruction. Patients with obstructive Raynaud's will have abnormal digital PPG studies and digital blood pressures. Digital blood pressures are generally 30 millimeters of mercury less than the brachial pressure in patients with obstructive Raynaud's syndrome. Cold challenge testing is unnecessary. The embolic source must be identified and corrected to prevent digital and or hand amputation. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.